The protesters in Sri Lanka may have handed over the political structures to the government, but the one that they still continue to occupy is the presidential secretariat where we are reporting from. What's more important and iconic here is on the demonstration site, which is the Gota Gogama created by the protesters themselves, has entered day 97. Joining us here on the first episode is Mr. Nusli Hamim. Um, firstly, Hamim, if you could tell us in terms of the protest has entered day 97, Seven, right um, if you can tell us give us a personal account what it was like for you because it's 97 days you have not really gone back home how does it really feel to spend those sleepless nights and you know right here outside the old parliament well uh, it's it's a really long period but uh, well until you asked this question I actually didn't realize how much uh, how how much days we have passed without I'm actually without going to my hometown I, ha I might have gone to my room once in a while to get change or to go to office but yeah it's been a really long time and it's been a very tough ride mostly overwhelmed with all the rumors and all the backlashes you are getting from everywhere despite the good work sometimes you do yeah the protesters to have a very peaceful protest so how has it been for you here in those last 97 days i mean when you are fighting against a dictatorship like rajapaksha regime i would rather call it a mafia rajapaksha mafia and someone like ranil vikramasinghe it's completely understandable you are fighting not only against them but their entire team of networks which might use their entire money to on social media's campaign spending for rumors and everything so it has been like I said before it has been very overwhelming sometimes you fall really low sometimes you just 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 cry it out loud as well so it's been a very tough ride for the 97 days but we really hope it will be worth for each and every Sri Lankans out here do you feel emotional because have you ever participated in a movement like this before no. And, you're, and you're a very young, uh, you're a youngster, you're a young professional. Have you ever done this before? No, this is the first time. I mean, not GGG is not the first time. I mean, like, this crisis is the first time I have actually participated in this kind of movement and protest stuff. Yeah. At this extent, towards, you know, in terms of the magnitude, this is the first time is Absolutely. what you're saying. But, you know, back home, what are your parents? Uh, you know, once they see you out there on the channels and, you know, you've been at the forefront of various protests. How do they feel, you know, when they see their son out there? What do they tell you? I mean, it's been, like you said, it's been 97 days, but even now, from day one to now, they've been all, they, what they always tell is, why are you doing this? I mean, it's, it's clearly like, you, they know that it, they, I'm doing it for the country. I mean, they also know it's, it's like a huge matter of risk. I'm putting my life at risk and doing it. So they, they, their thought hasn't been changed. They will be like, be safe, like, and don't like to go home and call me and something like that. So they've been like still very, uh, what do you call, very scared of all these things. Have you any time, you know, in these 97 days, we have seen massive protests, we have seen almost like a Sri Lankan uprising. At any point in time, have you felt, you know, uh, it, it's been very challenging, you cannot do it and enough. You want to just leave the protest and go back to what you were doing. Have you any time come to that point? There was a couple of times when you are like, uh, I've been getting s some sort of backlash in social medias regarding calling people for the protest and there was a especially in front of Ranil Vikramasinghe's house because we were getting beaten up people were getting beaten up and we actually asked people to come for support and and it turned out to be violent and people were just actually backlashing it saying I'm we are the one who incited violence which clearly not the right thing and we actually did not stop there but I really I thought of giving up but then people encouraged me to like because I didn't do anything wrong so I actually came back so receiving at the receiving end and the backlashes sometimes made you think whether you should really continue on this or not at any point in time in these last 97 days has your life ever been in line you know has it ever been at risk and what point was that 
I mean, I would say yesterday was a good example. Uh, yesterday in front of uh, Flower Road uh, Prime Minister's office, I was covered with, I think, four tear gas at once. And I think someone actually dragged me from the T-shirt and bought, uh, put water on me. So I actually thought I, would, I was going to die. I, I, that was the t moment actually I thought of I was going to die. Okay. Um, also, you know, we have seen the protesters now capture various political structures and they've also now handed over back to the government. You you don't see Mr. Gotobaya stepping down, right? He hasn't really officially stepped down while though his deadline has already passed on the 13th itself. Now you see Mr. Ranil Vikramising as the acting president. All this while in the last 97 days, the core of this particular protest has been that demanding, first demanding Gotobaya to go home and then now Ranil to resign. Clearly that's not happening and they seem very obstinate on that. But what next? You've already captured the political uh, structures, you've given it back, but what next? So what we, why we actually captured the political structures, I have given interviews to other, t other TV channels as well. We actually told this is a good message. We wanted to occupy it until Gotabe Rajabaksha and Ranil Vikram Singh steps down. But with time and what, when, what happened yesterday with uh, some people tried to storm into parliament, actually public started to mistrust the Arogale. So we actually, the Bar Association of Sri Lanka actually said, just try to give it back because there are lots of damages happening. So we actually respected public's opinion. We actually respected Bar Association's request and we have given it back. But until Gotabe Rajapaksha and Ranil Vikram Singh resigns, we will hold this presidential secretariat. Uh, and also we will definitely have to change our strategies in since Ranil Vikram Singh has come to power. Uh, I want to cut you there, stop you there. When you say strategies, why do you say you have to change your strategies? Because Ranil Vikram Singh has been eyeing on this presidential seat for like 30 odd years now. So he would, he is he's, he's someone, he's a very cunning politician. So it would be not easy to protest against him just like we did it with Gotabe Rajapaksha. So we would definitely need a proper strategy if we are to fight with Ronil Vikram Singh, even in a peaceful manner. Because so rework on the strategy. Of, of, of course, it's been a very emotional journey for Mr. Hameen over the last uh, 97 days. But just like him, there are others as well in this uh, Gota Gogama. You know, several tents have come up. It's almost like a, a festival-like sorts, what we witnessed when we, you know, we did, of course, explore Mr. Uh, Gota Gogama. But uh, not just humming, but when we did, of course, try and gauge uh, the public's pulse, what we understand is that several of them are of the opinion that no matter what really comes, so far, what they've achieved is a victory, but it's not over yet. In Colombo, with camera person Kumar Srija for NDTV.